in our top 100 countdown is Monica Seles, who won nine major titles and spent 178 weeks at number one. I first saw her when she was about 15. She had little legs like matchsticks, uh, and, and uh, she looked so frail and small, and yet she hit the ball even at that age like a ton, and uh, she was an amazing player. Went down the Orange Bowl, and I asked where this young girl was playing. And as I walked along the four courts, I heard, ee, ee. And I looked down underneath the fence, I saw a pair of legs this thin and a big prince racket. Went around. I saw this little girl playing on the baseline, two hands. I started playing two hands on both sides because I was very small and skinny. In those days, there were no kid-sized rackets. So really, it just came out that that was the only way I could hold the rackets. All of a sudden, Monica Sellis comes along, stands very close to the baseline, and huge off of both wings of the two hands. Monica Sellis, I think, showed us that it's not a very complicated game. If you hit the ball hard enough, deep enough, close enough to the line, you're gonna win a lot of tennis matches. And Monica did that with unbelievable consistency and success. Really, the first player to be so aggressive with the return, inside the baseline, looking to attack from the moment her opponent would hit a second serve, then, and being so accurate at the same time. Game with Sellis, That's good. First game final. This woman is tough and competed fiercely and ferociously. For all the stroke analysis you want, for all the numbers breakdowns that some people like, so much of it's here. Monica will go down as the best, if not one of the two or three best competitors that have ever played the game. Her dedication, her concentration, her total passion for the game of, of becoming the best and, and being the best. She was just a ferocious, focused competitor. The two greatest competitors I've ever seen in any sport, Michael Jordan, Monica Sellis. She was fearless. She would just come up, you know, one of the first big hitters of the game and really the first player to ever challenge Steffi. I think Stephanie and I always played every single match was unbelievable because we both were such fighters and we both didn't give an inch. They were so fierce competitors together that every time they entered the court, they, they really were head and head and, you know, to really compete well. And I think they brought the best out themselves. Really, they played uh, incredible tennis. And the reason why Steffi resumed her career at a high level and started winning slams again regularly was because Monica was stabbed by one of her fans. I mean, Monica Sellis was on a roll. She was on a tear when Gunter Parch stabbed her in the back. And he unfortunately got exactly what he wanted was for Steffi Groff to get back to the top of the game. And it's not Steffi's fault, obviously, but it really changed the course of women's tennis. It's the biggest tragedy that's ever happened in women's tennis. She was well on her way to winning multiple, multiple more ground sound titles. No question that totally changed her as a person and as a player. I mean, I really didn't know if I would play myself ever again. I mean, emotionally, it was a big issue because the first time in my life I felt that void. I wasn't doing what I really wanted to do. Monica Seles was beating Steffi on a regular basis, and she was unbelievable. And if that guy hadn't stabbed her, the record books would really look different. It's a little hard to sort of play the what-if game to too much of an extreme, or at the same time, you have to appreciate if she had in any ways sustained this pace she was on, this may even 